up till now I've displayed game parameters in the debug area. The parameters for this game are laps completed. If I start the embedded player, we see the debug area in the top left hand corner. But if I start the standalone player, there is no debug area. We need a head up display which I've added at the bottom of the screen. Open the file made in the previous tutorial. You can make the file yourself or download it from my website. Click the Add New Scene button and add a new empty scene. Call the new scene HUD for Head Up Display and change Blender Render to Blender Game. Add a camera. Click the Object Properties and set its Z location to 5 Blender units. Add a lamp, a Hemi, and set its Z location to 5. Change the view to the camera view and add text. Click the font properties button. Scroll down and set the size of the text to 0.3. I could have scaled to 0.3. With the cursor in the 3D view, hold down shift and press D to duplicate and place the duplicate at the bottom to the left. Hold down shift, press D to duplicate and put the new duplicate at the bottom just past center. Go into edit mode. The tab key toggles between object mode and edit mode. Change the text to Batmobile tab to object mode. Select the other text. Tab to edit mode and change the text to sports car. Tab to object mode. Hold down shift to select both static text objects. In the object menu, convert to mesh. Text converted to mesh behaves more predictably. Select the text object. In the view menu, view the properties panel. Now a text object has an add text game property button. Click it. That adds a property called text. You can't change the name of the property, but you can change its type. I'm going to change it to integer whole number. From Blender version 2.62 onwards, text is dynamic, which means the text can change while the game engine is running. When you go into edit mode to alter the text, you are simply setting the initial value of the text. If you want to make the text static so that it cannot change while the game engine is running, then do what I did with these labels, convert them to mesh. To illustrate the point, I'm going to go into edit mode and set the initial value of the text to 500. Back into object mode, I'm going to add an always sensor, an and controller, and a property actuator. I'm going to add one to the property text. This is the property that all text objects can have, and by altering it, makes the text dynamic. Connect that up and start the game engine and we add 1 to the 500 and if I drag to close the properties panel and click to go into pulse mode and start the game engine we add 1 60 times a second. To display the number of laps completed the initial value should be 0. Back into object mode and move that down and next to the sports car label. Now I'm going to delete the always sensor and add a message sensor and this is going to listen for a message the subject of which is sport which is broadcast when the sports car completes a lap. Connect that up and that should work. Now all we have to do is hold down shift, press D and enter to duplicate. Move the duplicate next to the Batmobile label. Change the subject of the message to listen for to Bat. And now we've completed the head up display scene. Click the browse scene button and go back to the game scene. Select the empty and use the white triangles to close up the logic bricks. Add a scene actuator. 
Now the scene actuator has many modes, add background scene and add overlay scene behave a bit like image editing software where you can put a layer in front or behind the current layer. If I choose add overlay scene, we'll put a scene in front of the current scene, click scene and select the head up display scene that we just made. I'm going to move the logic brick to the top of the stack. Before I do that, I'm going to give it a meaningful name, HUD. Close it up and use the up arrow to move it to the top. I'm going to add an AND controller and give that a meaningful name, HUD. Close them up and use the up arrow to move the controller to the top. I'm going to take a link from the always sensor so that it's fired up at the start and I'm going to connect the AND controller to the scene actuator. Now when we start the game and cheat by going backwards, the head-up display displays the number of laps completed. But when the Batmobile wins and we go to the win scene, we still have the head-up display, which we don't want. Click the browse scene button and select the win scene. Add an always sensor an AND controller and a scene actuator. Change the mode of the scene actuator to remove scene and select the head up display. Now when we come to the wind scene the always sensor will send a signal through to remove the head up display. The same needs to be done for the sports car winning scene and I've jumped ahead and added the logic bricks. That's the end of the tutorial I'll put the start file and the end file for you to download at my website www.freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there. Thanks for watching and goodbye.